clearly anybody who has a pulse knows the backdrop of where Jim Rodriguez is right now. Las Vegas, he is there on assignment, and he is with ESPN Latin America on-site producer, and he joins me on the On to Something podcast. I'm Brian Fenley, an anchor for Fox Sports Radio. You can follow Jim on Twitter, and I encourage you, I order you to do that at J Rod Show. He also is a host for the gambling show, cigar show, so he does producing, he does writing, he does hosting. He is like that versatile, he can do everything kind of piece of the industry which is super important given that you know as many different things as you can do the better and i want to start here i'm watching and i'm following your exploits in your your latest trip to las vegas and i know you're based out of miami but you come and you do a lot of boxing events what gets you jacked up most about leading into a fight and being a part of the production you know it's funny anybody that's been in any sort of uh live experience and not necessarily television i'm talking about any industry you you you, you make plans you know you say okay this you, you map out this is what we're going to do monday tuesday wednesday thursday and then as of, uh, as always happens you just throw it all up in the air and you get us and you just kind of wing it because at the end of the day in, in my industry you know you're at the beholden of, of canelo if canelo doesn't want to talk i can't tell him hey but on tuesday i have slotted that we were going to do an interview with you and i'm not saying canelo specifically because he's sure. one He's very generous, but if, if the we're at the end of the day, our whole business, our whole job is about people giving us an interview or giving us access. And if they're not in the mood that day, or or they're hungry, or you know they had a bad training session, it's stuff. You know it, that's where you really see the professionalism. And what gets me jacked up, and and what I love about doing a, a live daily show when I was doing that is that you know you you come in, you do all the plans for the day, you put it on the board, and then at the end of the day when the show's over, everybody's you know high five and let's go have a beer, that board gets wiped clean. Yeah. That's one of the biggest rush for me. And then the next day, that board is empty and you get to do it all over again and you get to create and you get to make stuff. So I, that's what I love about it. I love the creating. You know, it seems like it, 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 it's a template. On Monday, we do this. On Tuesday, we do this. Wednesday's the press conference. Thursday's the undercard. Friday's the weigh-in. But at the end of the day, it's what happens in that mix. That's what, that's what gets me jacked up. And that's why I love producing so much. You, every day is different. You never know what's going to happen. You have to be really adaptable to whatever comes your way. What is it like from your perspective, Jim, on fight night? Well, fight night's amazing because for me, you know, I go through a whole little ritual because, you know, I, I, I don't have to, but I put on a suit. I like to, I like to get dressed up, you know, and then you see, it's just the word I can, I can describe and, and maybe it's hackneyed or to overuse is, is sexy. Nothing <laughs> sexier than a fight night. I, I don't, you know, whether it's, whether it's MMA, whether it's boxing, but boxing has that cachet. Boxing has that old school. And you see the, the assorted characters. I mean, it looks like the Star Wars bar, you know? The assorted characters that are walking around, you know, and the women and, and the guys and everything like that on a fight night. There's nothing sexier, especially in Las Vegas. There's nothing sexier than a, than, than a fight night. It's, it's amazing. It, you just, there's this energy. Everybody's amped up. Everybody's kind of dressed up and ready. And there's a couple of cocktails involved. So everybody's feeling good. And then you see the fight. And then when the guys come out or the girls come out and they're announced, oh man, it's just, it's just such a rush. And, and listen, I, I'm not even a, I, I'm a baseball guy. That's, that, that's, that's, that's where my heart is, you know, but there's nothing like a fight night. Nothing like, it. oh. Speaking of fighting, you over the course of your career have shown a track record of fighting for your dreams and, and doing what you can to continue to elevate yourself in the business. Where would you say that fight to stay afloat, to fight for those dreams would illustrate itself in your career the most? Well, I think, I think for me, I love challenges, you know, cause again, you know, I'm Cuban. I don't look Cuban. I'm, I'm bilingual. I don't look like I'm bilingual. You know, I learned English uh, after I, I learned Spanish. I mean, my mom, my mom and dad dropped me off. I grew up in Los Angeles. My mom dropped me off in school, kindergarten, five years old, didn't speak a lick of English. And this, and this was, this was 1976. So it's not like we were like, oh, our, our brown brothers, let's help them out. Let's have the Spanish. Let's have the bilingual class. They literally spoke to me in English. And I was like, I think they thought I had some sort of, you know, uh, developmental issue because here's this little white boy and he couldn't speak English because I, I, I could speak Spanish. I was, I was, there was nothing wrong with me, but it, it, I learned English that way. And, and I think always having to sort of 
uh, be underestimated. When I got into Spanish television about 10 years ago, you know, there was people like, why, what does this guy know about Spanish? But I know how to make television. So there was always that sort of having to prove yourself, having to, having to, to you know, Caleb Plant, who's fighting Canelo this weekend, said a quote that really resonated with me. It's, it's, it's always satisfying to prove somebody right, but it's always even more satisfying to prove somebody wrong. Because when you prove somebody right, you're validating people's trust in you. But when you prove somebody wrong, you're validating yourself. And that's, that's, you know, I don't have a chip on my shoulder, but that's the kind of stuff that gets you going. Cause you, you know, to me, I always tell the guys here, you know, when we do a show, we do coverage, you know, every day we have to sort of justify why we're here. Every day we've got to sort of like, why are these guys here? Well, because they can do things, they can get things other people can. You know, we, we get Canelo to talk to us when he doesn't want to talk to us. You know, we get Canelo, a perfect example. Uh, the other day we, it was the, uh, the grand arrivals where they show up kind of like a, you know, it's a, it's a pseudo red carpet stuff. And, you know, at the time sports center in Latin America was on the air. So we coordinated where we came over and, you know, give us our usual soundbite, but we coordinated. So we were live. So no other, everybody had Canelo, but they had him for 11 o'clock that night. We had him live and he knew we were live and we have a little bit of a relationship for us. So he kind of hung out with us and he kind of gave us the daps and and it really, that's the difference. That's the difference that you try to make, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying it's always going to happen, but that's the stuff you work towards. And that's where, again, it's great to prove people right, but it's even better to prove people wrong. And then I shout out to Caleb Plant for coming up with that, Jim. I, I'm going to take that mantra to heart. I love that. Jim Rodriguez is with us. I'm Brian Fenley. So building up relationships, super important in boxing, in, in what you're doing as far as getting access to these boxers. What does it take, Jim, to build up that trust with those high-profile boxers so that they will sit down with you, they will share their stories? What efforts have to be going through you and your team to, yeah, build up that trust with these top-notch boxers who have 100 things to do in a single day? You know, I think, I think at the end of the day, from a sort of a business point of view, it makes sense for them for business. You know what? They're going to promote me. They're going to promote my fight. They're going to promote my pay-per-view. It just makes good business sense. But I think when you take that sort of cold dollars and cents part of it, I think what it is is just being there, being there. You know, you know, we, we, we've always talked about it. You know, we, you know, if, you know, like the Atlanta Braves, for example, they, they win the World Series. Well, come the playoffs, all these national writers, all these national media come in, and all of a sudden they want to talk to Freddie Freeman, or they may not know the stories, but it's the local writers it's the local broadcasters those are the ones that know the stories and really get the quality stuff and that's where i think the trust is because if if they see you day in and day out there with them in the locker room or in the gym or hey every time they have a fight or every time they have a presentation or something you're there for them i think eventually they, they start saying okay yeah this guy this guy they may not know me they may not know my name they might think oh that's that guy from espn okay great and oh, and he's with he's with Chava, who's who's our analyst, or he's with Renato, who's our play-by-play -play guy. Okay, yes, they're always here. They're always at these events. I think it's just being there. And you know what? I, not to get too philosophical, but that's what relationships are, are like. Yeah. That's what being a parent is like. It's being there, literally being there, physically and mentally to be there. You know, there's nothing worse. There's nothing worse than a vacant relationship where you're there but you don't talk, or you're there, you're a parent, and you don't really talk to, to your kids or whatever. You know. Uh, that's all part of that's all part of being in relationships. It's being there. It's being there for them when they need it, you know, good and bad. And they can feel if you put in the effort too. So if you're there, you put in the effort, then they're gonna want to put the effort in as well. And obviously this helps enhance your credibility. I saw, Jim, that you had to sit down maybe multiple times with Manny Pacquiao, but I saw from your Instagram that you had a chance to to talk with him. Certainly he said what he said on camera. But off camera, being in the room with him, what else did you learn about him from that experience? There is such a, you know, when you're dealing with, with fighters, you, my first thought is these guys are very violent, very like, I, I don't want to like, piss them off. I don't want <laughs> yes. to like, say the wrong thing because they're going to, because, you know, they, I, you know you're, these people beat people up for a living. Now, most of them are pussycats, but um what I, what I got from Manny Pacquiao, there was just a general, and I don't know if you're spiritual, if you believe in any sort of Zen or Buddha or anything like that. There is just a, a peace hmm. 
around him. There, there's like a glow around him, you know, and again, you know, he knows that he's at the end of his career. He's made all the money in the world. He's the most popular guy in his country. So maybe he's earned all that, but there's just like a general peace about the guy. Wow. Nothing seems to bother him. Nothing seems to get him, you know, out of sorts. You know, he's just like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm happy, you know, and, and maybe that's what success is. Maybe that's what opening up, you know, the getting to the edge of the mountain and seeing the land and seeing the waters and saying, yes, this is, I am the king of all that I see. And that's, and that's what Manny Pacquiao you know to me there was just such a such a such a general peace about him that i i felt good it calmed me down you know like oh we gotta do this we gotta, and we gotta run here and we gotta go there and i'm like so, oh man just just entering the room you know his his chakra his mantra his glow you know it's funny that i think people would say that when they see you walk into the room but yeah, you know, like, yeah, let's have some beers let's have a drink hey, what's this? Hey, what's this? there is no peace and quiet i am the bull in the china shop when i walk <laughs> So you also do the gambling show, cigar show. What do those shows do for you as a creative? Well, you know, they, they, they started, you know, they say mother is the necessity is the mother of invention. And, you know, I, because of COVID, just like everybody, I, you know, I lost my gigs, you know, everything slowed down in the industry, you get laid off, you get cut back and all that stuff. And so for me, I just wanted to keep my producer muscle working and I wanted to keep stay relevant and, and, uh, and, I didn't have a budget. I didn't have any money to pay a host or anything like that. Or, you know, you hate to ask, people, Hey, would you host a show for free? You know, even though it happens all the time, I didn't want to do that. So I said, you know, I've, I've been in the business, you know, 25 years, you know, we, we were, I've been making TV in standard definition, you know? And, and I said, well, I'll host my own show. I mean, I know it's about sports. I'm, you know, I, people say I'm personable. And then it just kind of, that was like six, seven years ago. It kind of became, you know, uh, uh, it became kind of a thing and you get the bug and you get, and people say, you're actually pretty good at this. So then, you know, I talked to a lot of talent that I've worked with and I said, listen, no lie, let's have a drink, let's have some dinner, break it down for me. How can I get better? And I've worked on that craft as well to be, to be a better host. And then what it does for me, it just, it lets me, it's, it's one thing to create something and then let somebody else do it. And not that I'm, not that I have, I don't have an ego uh, about that stuff. You know, I, I also I always believe you put the best people in charge of, of, of stuff. You know, you let people do the best stuff. But when you create something and you have a talent deliver it for you, there's satisfaction because, yeah, I, I, I wrote that or I, I came up with that idea. And, and this talent was awesome and amazing and they, and they hit a home run with it. But when you do all that and you do it, it's your talent, it's your idea, it's stuff you wrote and you deliver it, then there's 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 like an unbelievable I don't know, cathartic, you know, orgasmic even way. <laughs> oh, I did that. And I did that, you know, and it's, and it's great, you know, and I'm, and I'm a constant feedback guy. I mean, I'm not, I'm not insecure. I'm not like, I'm not like, Oh, I'm no good. It's not like that. I mean, I mean, I, I think I have a little talent for this, but I'm always constant. How can I be better? What can I do next? What could I have done better? What can I, you know, and, and I think that's what gets you going. I mean, one, one of the people that I, that I worked with that had the biggest impact on my career and I've worked with some great talent was Jim Rome. And Jim, wow. Rome gets, Jim Rome gets a bad rap. And maybe it's earned, maybe it's not earned. But when I worked with Jim Rome, and he, you know, he was very intense. He came into work. And when it was time to work, didn't want to know how your day was, didn't want to know how your weekend was, didn't want to know how your kids were, it was time to work. And what I saw was a guy who was doing a radio show, five in the morning, getting up, writing a radio show, did the radio show, and it came, did a TV show. And he had his hands on everything. Everything he said, he had his hands on. Nobody wrote stuff for him. Or if, or if somebody wrote stuff for him, he had, he had to kind of sign off on everything. And there was such a, a work mentality about this guy that in with all the success that he's had, because when I, when I was working with Rome, he was already a huge hit, huge, huge yeah. star. It wasn't like local radio Jim Rome. It was mega Jim Rome is burning ESPN, you know, number one sports radio show format in the country. It was Rush Limbaugh and Jim Rome, you know? Yeah. Um, and he never lost that, that hunger, never lost that drive. And that taught me a lot about being a pro and about working, coming to work every day and pounding. And that's, Canelo's like that to me, Canelo Alvarez. That guy never misses the gym. Like, I, that makes $40 million a fight. Never shows up out of shape. Never shows up complacent. Just constantly pounding away. And, and that, that's what I tell my kids. And that's what I try to tell people is, is you got to keep working on it. And, you know, and, and it's hard because when you're successful at something, like a Jim Rome or a Canelo Alvarez, you know, nobody says no to you. Everybody says, you're the funniest guy in the room. Every joke's funny. Yeah, you're the most handsome guy in the room. And to not believe that, 
and to keep pounding, to keep acting, you know, to keep trying to be like that intern trying to make your first gig. That's impressive. That, that, that is a mental discipline. And, and I, a lot, and I just watching Jim Rome, you know, I learned a lot from that. So constantly striving to get better and, and working on stuff. What does that look like specifically for you now? Because you've come such a long way, even as an on-air host, but as someone, like you said, who is never allergic to feedback, what are you focusing on right now to be a better version of you in this business? Well, it's always, it's always, you know, we, we, we live in a, in a society that, that change is, is, is inevitable. You know, change is the only constant, right? Yeah. All right. It's, it's, it's sort of, it's, it's that, it's that sort of misnomer. Change is the only constant. So what works today, you know, you can't be doing the same show. Like I don't, I think in your career, I don't think you're the same I don't think you do things the same way you did five years ago. No you're doubt. Involved. Yeah, totally I mean, not. Look at us. Look what we're doing here. You know, we're, we're just the pandemic working from home and, and creating your own podcast and creating your own stuff. You have to constantly be evolving and you can't be afraid of that. And to me, I'm, I'm always afraid of being stuck in the mud. You know, when, I, when we do something and it works, I'm like, great. You know, I had a boss who was not the best boss in the world, but I learned from him because it was always like, what's next? Great. Fantastic show what's next? And that's how I'm always like, okay, great. We had a great show. This, this, all this stuff worked. We know this will work so we can do it again, but then what's next? How do we grow from that? How do we evolve from that? How do we make the broadcast better? How do we make us better? You know, this, 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 and I think that's what keeps you relevant. It keeps you fresh. It keeps you young, you know, in, in, in a television perspective and it keeps you hungry. And I think your bosses and people know what they're getting. They're getting someone who's not going to just show up and oh yeah it's way in day stand over there did i shoot this break that okay great there you go cheers you know it's it's what can we do what can what, what kind of a difference we make and, and that's what i try to bring to the table passion energy and how can we evolve and not be afraid to change you know i've never been afraid of you know when i was producing shows we go on the air at 11 o'clock you know you almost hope something happens you almost hope something happens at, at 10 55 that you blow up the rundown and you start all over <laughs> you almost hope it you know, I, I used to have a producer that I was that I was mentoring, and, and he, you know, he was always like, "I hate this, I hate this," because you know, my whole show's ruined. I go, "No, your your show is awesome now. Your show's not ruined because if you're doing the same show that you put in at three o'clock in the afternoon, there's there's something wrong. There's something wrong, and not necessarily you did something wrong, but boy, it's a terrible day because the same rundown you had at three o'clock in the afternoon should not be what's on the air at eleven o'clock that night. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I, I feel like the adrenaline junkie. And Jim Rodriguez loves that. The fact that like stuff can happen last second, specifically where have there been moments where you've had to really act on the fly when you had an idea for a broadcast or things were going a certain way. And then you had to make a quick change and you pulled it off, even though things went haywire or didn't go as planned initially. Well, gosh, I mean, there's so many, you know, live TVs always the, that's, that's where it happens. Live TV is always the best. You know, we've, we've lost communications with our talent. You know, we've had where, you know, hey, you're on and everything, we've lost all communication. So now we can't tell them to rap, throw it back to us. And so the talent is, the talent is just flying blind, you know, and you just, you're texting or you're trying to call somebody on the phone. You know, you, you know you're doing a live shot in Mexico. They turn off the lights on you because, you know, they don't know and it wasn't communicated. I, I think for me, the, the most satisfying, you know, when, when, like, I remember when Muhammad Ali died, we were on the air. So we just kind of scrapped the show. We said in the middle of the show, hey, Muhammad Ali died. Oh, my God. So we start, you know, finding videos, start making phone calls, getting people on the air. And then we can't leave the show like that because, you know, the show is going to re-air in the morning. Then we have to do the whole show over again. And then, but again, it was so much adrenaline, so much, you know, you don't want to say fun because somebody died. But again, yeah. having your show sort of implode like that and then having to produce stuff on the fly or when you do a post-game show, you know, we, you know, we do, I did a lot of Mexican soccer coverage, you know, for, for Latin America. And so we'd go to the, to the Mexican league playoffs or to their finals. And so, you know, my boss would tell me, Hey, where's your rundown for the, for the post? And I'm like, what rundown? You know, <laughs> you know we have some general things, you know, they, they present them the trophy, they hold the trophy up. But after that, it's, it's, you know, and I'm, I'm pretty thorough. I'm pretty, I'm pretty, you know, OCD about this stuff. But at the end of the day, it's, it's grab this guy, grab that guy, interview, play back, uh, play back to the, the key goal of the game. Let's break this down. Let's do that. And just kind of, those are the shows that just fly by. And then at the end of the day, you just sit back, oh, what just happened here? You know, we just did two hours of television and it was amazing and, and unscripted on the fly and stuff. And again, 
I, I trust me, that's not what I like to do. I think the best TV is scripted TV that looks unscripted. That's uh. And that's where the true word talent comes from, from those from those guys and girls that are that are, you know, men and women that are on the air that make it look so seamless that I always tell people the best TV is scripted TV that looks unscripted. And that's where the true word talent comes in, where they're able to just kind of wing it off the fly and make it look amazing. When you think about the rundown of your career, some might look at it from afar and say, oh, it looks kind of scripted, but it's been unscripted. And you've like, you pointed out how talent handles tough situations. You have rolled with whatever adversity has been thrown your way. So in, in a way I can see that translating to how you have been able to wade your way through the business Looking back at everything you've done now, what surprises you considering what you thought you would be when you first got in this business to what you are now? My thing is, why the hell am I still doing this? <laughs> you know, no, I mean, to, to me, I've always said you learn from failures, you don't learn from success. And so I look at my resume and I see, you know, and again, I'm not one of these guys that, that beats himself up. I love myself and I'm confident and, and, and you know, stuff like that. I'm a, you know, I'm not one of these guys that I'm not like, Oh, but my, I look at my resume as, as a, as, as a litany of failures. Just that show got canceled. That show didn't go away. got laid off from there. That network went away. It's, 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 it's littered in failure. And I think that's what motivates you. That's what I learned from this. I, I left this job for this job and that job turned out to be terrible that, you know, and I should have stayed there. And, and, but I don't have any regrets. You can't regret anything. You know, you just, you, you do what you can, what's best for you, for your family, for your career at the time. So to me, the, 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 the places that I've, that I've left, you know, I learned every single, I learned so much, you know, having, you know, I had one of the worst bosses in the world. I'm not going to tell you where it was or who it is, but it, <laughs> I would say like, you know, I, I would say the devil, Hitler, and this guy, you know what I mean? I would, I would put, you know, I would put that category in there. And, and, but again, I learned so much from this dude because he was such a bad person and that, you know, he had taught me how to be, how to be a better producer, how to be a better uh, mentor, how to be a better leader, you know, so you take those opportunities and you say, okay, great. You know, when I tell my kids, you know, he's, he's, he's trying to be an athlete, he's a swimmer. I said, hey, man, you learn more from failure than you from, learn from, from success. So much more. Because then now, now it's, it's, it's a gut check for yourself, you know. And at the end of the day, it's always about accountability. I mean, trust me, I'm, I'm not going to be that guy that, oh, I had a terrible boss. You suck. No, I probably, I probably deserved some of those. You know, I did deserve some of those, you know, things that happened. But at the same time, it's, it's how you handle it and how you grow from it and how you grow in it how you react and if you become better so for me it's, it's it's just every stop along the way has been learning getting better being more confident and so when that incident whatever it is when whenever it pops up again when you're in a position where like oh my god this is, this happened to me at univision or this happened to me at fox or this happened to me at nfl network and i maybe i didn't handle it the best way now i can handle it again and then you handle it because you learn from it that's the best part and then when, again, when you've been in this business long enough, you start seeing things happen all over again. And you're like, oh, okay, I know what's going to happen now. Let me go ahead and fix that and make sure it doesn't happen again. Well, I see a, a lot of appreciation for what you've done and what you've accomplished. Even if things, like you said, you've had to go off, off script, you have had to go off roading, if you will. And why it's so easy for those who are in this business where you kind of get spit out and it's, it's a grind and you can get hung up on stuff that doesn't go your way. And then you, you deal with challenging people. How have you not let yourself not get caught up in that as much as others? You know, it's funny. I remember when I first started, I met a couple of people who, I, who I'm still friends with today, who I think are great at what they do, both on-air people and producers. And they just were so bitter. Yeah. Just angry all the time. I mean, I'm sure you maybe you've worked with people like that. They're sure. always they're cynical. Walking, yeah. Oh, yeah, this sucks. Or, oh, I got to work the overnight shift or oh, whatever, you know, this stupid game I got to do. Or, and I just, I don't know. I've just, I'm, I, that's not my personality. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm that pain in the ass, stupid optimist. It's like, it's not that I have to do a game, it's I get to do a game. 
it's not that I have to do a show. I get to do a show. That's the way I've always looked at it. And, and maybe that maybe at this end of time, you're like, bro, I don't care. Stop being so freaking optimistic, okay? It's 6 a.m. on a Sunday. Nobody wants to be, nobody wants to hear about how happy you are. But, but at the end of the day, then what are we doing? Then do something else. Go sell insurance. Go work in a bank, you know? Go do something else, you know? Um, no, I, I, again, I, I just, to me, it's, I love what I do. I'm lucky. I learned I, from the time I was nine years old, I knew I wanted to do this. You know, and 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 I every day is a gift. And then you know, again, because of the the failures I've had in my career, and because of the pandemic, losing jobs, being out of work, and having to sort of literally reinvent yourself with podcasts. And now I'm going to be a host, and I'm going to produce. And you know, I think all you have is your reputation. All you have is your is, is your body of work that you've worked with people. I mean, that again, that's how this. I mean, ESPN Latin America didn't. You know, it, it's not like there was a on, on Indeed.com they were looking for a producer. You know, it, you know, it was basically. I hired a guy who was out of a job uh, a few years back and, you know, got him going back again. And then he landed a gig and now he had a chance to bring me along. I lost my gig, you know, and again, that's, that's Aww. all. And that's just not television. That's any industry. You know what I mean? That's just, that's where you forge relationships. That's why you don't burn bridges. That's why you always try to be the best you can, because at the end of the day, I've always said this, if you're able to hire people that you like, that you know, you're going to work with, you've won. You've won, you know, and again, that's why we GMs, you know, hire managers that they want or, you know, or, or managers hire coaches that they want, because if you're going to lose, I'm going to lose with my guys. I don't want to lose with guys. Somebody gave me, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and that's how it is. And that, you know, it's your reputation. People know you and then they introduce you. And then I can't tell you how many times it's been, Oh yeah. I remember you worked here back then. And yeah. I remember that. And that's how it is. I'm sure it's the same thing for you, man. You know? And, and more likely than not, when you work with people that you enjoy, the content is even better because you enjoy working with each other and you just put that much more time into your craft, especially when the environment is nurturing. I want to leave you with this final question. Jim Rodriguez is with us. Of course, ESPN Latin America on site right now in Las Vegas, boxing coverage. And yeah, I mean, living the life. And I know you'll be in Vegas in a couple of weeks as well. And a constant coffee, coffee Las Vegas coffee. <laughs> so yes, he also gambling show host cigar show. He does also really big in sports gambling. You can follow him on Twitter at Jay. I got, I got to plug my stuff. It's, it's five reasons sports network. That's the okay. Show. It's, it's called five reasons to bet. That's my show. Uh, you go to five reasons, sports.com five, five reasons, five reasons, sports network. It's based out of Miami. Ethan Skolnick's great uh, uh, reporter. Uh, one of the best people ever. So go five reasons, sports network. And then my cigar show is called, uh, I do two things. I do a podcast called the cigar snob magazine podcast. Um, it's amazing. It's just straight audio. It's great. We smoke cigars. We do blind tastings. We interview cigar industry people. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's the Eric Calvino and Ivan Ocampo who run Cigar Side Magazine. And then I do a video version of a cigar show called MyBlend.TV. MyBlend.TV. And we interview cigar people, uh, influencers and stuff. And we smoke and we have a good time. You know, I, I, one of the coolest things I interviewed uh, 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 Luis Cuevas, who, who, who runs Cuevas Cigars five generations is because his son just got into the business five generations of cuevas have been doing cigars wow came to cuba to the dominican to miami it's it's amazing so to me that's what i love i love stories i love whether you're smoking cigars or having a drink or gambling or or doing a piece on a, on a boxer it's all about the story it's all about who they are and, and what gets them to tick that's what i love that's what i love about uh, talking to people and meeting people and when it comes to your work with ESPN Latin America and the boxing coverage, I feel like you wouldn't be opposed to having a cigar with your coworkers. I mean, just we, walk- we had a couple last night. <laughs> yes. One who, as I like to call it. And there's so many people who you work with in, in Las Vegas and you have great relationships with and, and really enjoy. One would be who you mentioned earlier in this conversation, Renato uh, Bermudez with, with ESPN and, and the, the boxing coverage. What, like, you have had so much fun with all of these broadcasters working with, but specifically for him, what's it like getting to know him? Well, he's an amazing dude. First of all, he's, he's got a younger brother that's also a play-by-play guy. So Renato does the boxing, and, and his brother Andres does uh, does UFC coverage for ESPN Latin America. So it's the Bermuda's bros, as I like to call them. Um, he's a great guy, because you know what it is? He's, he's, he's about as grounded a guy. He's a guy who's wildly successful. 
wildly successful, very respected in the industry. And he walks in the room. It's, it's like walking in with Elvis. It's like walking in with the mayor. You know, everybody knows who he is, but I've never seen him. I guess what it is, is, is he knows he's successful. He knows he's good at what he does. Okay. That's the thing. There's no denying that. There's, a, there's, there's that confidence of, yeah, I'm a badass. But I still see him talking to, you know, uh, a waiter or the, or the bus boy or some guy we see down the street who's, who's a janitor who recognizes him. You know, again, I've never seen him sort of big time anybody. Wow. I've never seen him be like, oh, no, 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 no. you want to take a picture? Let's take a picture. You want me to sign something? You want me to talk to you? Uh, uh, somebody comes in from a, from a YouTube channel or, or, or another high end magazine. Yeah, let's talk. Let's do it. You know, I've never seen him big time anybody. And, and, and you learn from that because you see that, you know, and you're like, wow, OK, this is how it's done. And he's probably one of the greatest, I would say, uh, mentors, people that I want to, you know, I want to em emulate both as a, as, a, as a human being, as a father, as a husband, you know, because he's all those things, you know, as a talent and as a producer. Thing. This, this is kind of how it's done, you know, and he's just a great guy, great guy. I'm, I'm lucky to work with him. And I think he would say the same thing for you. And what a rewarding experience for you, Jim, to be able to work with so many awesome people. And yeah, that's the thing. When you work with people you'd actually want to hang out with, then you, you've won. You and won. the coverage shows and the, the, yeah. the amount of great content that comes out, which is going to continue to come out in Las Vegas. Jim Rodriguez, ESPN Latin America. Of course, all of the different podcasts that he's a part of. You can follow him on Twitter at J Rod Show. I'm on Twitter at Brian Fenley. Jim, this was so much fun, man. I learned a lot about you. And I think a lot of people are going to gain inspiration from your story. I love it, man. Listen, it's all about believing in your dreams. Don't let people tell you, you know, not doing it. And, and I think the most important thing I always tell people is accountability. Yeah. Be accountable. That's it. It may not be your fault. And it probably isn't your fault, but you're still responsible. And responsibility doesn't mean, doesn't mean blame. I'll leave you with this. Uh, when, I, when, I got, when I left Univision and I was kind of down, I read this book. The, I, I figure we can curse, right? It, yeah, it, yeah, yeah, for sure. It's The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. That's the, that's the book I read. Mark Manson, Changed My Life. And there's a, there's a capsule in there. There's a, there's a story he tells in there about a guy sitting at a red light. He's waiting for the red light to turn green. Minding his own business. Guy comes up behind him rear ends him, crashes his car. It's not his fault, right? Yeah. But he's responsible now to call the insurance, call the doctor, go to the body shop, follow up. And that's what life is. Respond, you know, being accountable. Mm. It's not your fault. Most of the time. Now, I also believe a lot of our problems are self-made, but it's not your fault, but now you're responsible for this. You know what I mean? Interesting. And that really kind of like, holy cow. So yeah, there are going to be people that are, that are going to be jerks that maybe railroad you or, 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 or want to see you not succeed. Keep pounding, man. Keep pounding. Be, be true to yourself. Be happy. Enjoy what you do. And, or find some way to be happy with what you do. And, and always be accountable. Jim, I love it. Thank you so much. That was so well said. All right, man. Thank you.